That's a hard question to answer because it would be hard to separate my works from my memories, but it would be hard to separate my life from my memories as well. So they do draw from memories, but um, not specifically from, from memories. They're not built from memories. Usually the titles sometimes come before the sculpture comes, once in a while. Usually they develop in just how we talk about the work in progress to each other. So if something's being fabricated with my fabricator and I have to get on the phone and talk to him, I'll say, you know, how's that going with the big lady, you know, or, you know, how's that going with the tractor? How's that going with the um, self-portrait? Others kind of go back to your original question, like the return to the one came after the sculpture was developed and being worked on. Often the title is slang. Sometimes there's an official title, like with the lady mannequin, Fall 91 is its official title, but everybody just calls it the big lady. I do as well or the car wreck, uh, rather than unpainted sculpture. Mr. Pinot had asked me to make a sculpture for the Dogana while, uh, you know, a couple years before it was finished. And the day he asked me, I was scheduled for an open heart surgery, you know, a few weeks later to replace a part of my heart. And, um, when he asked me, I instant, instantly saw the, the sculpture. I mean, I think I saw it because of the frog in America. We use it uh, in uh, primary school to when we first dissect, you know, to cut it and look inside. And, you know, so I think it was, in a sense, my heart or, you know, my innards or, 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 or something. It came originally out of thinking about archaic art. And my question had been, you know, why can I look at a Kuros figure and get so much out of it? You know, why is a Kuros figure seemingly so contemporary to me in my experience of it? I started thinking of it, you know, because the, the social context is long gone. You know, we're not in ancient Athens. I speculate that uh, it was so beautifully and so powerfully sculpted that the sculptors had to have been thinking sculpturally to, to put it together. And I've thought a lot about how the sculptures were made. And you know, it's often said if you understand how something is made, you get closer to understanding the sculpture itself um, or any object. I um, see it as a meaning machine of, of uh, you know, that the, the, the meaning is not specific to the moment it was made, to its function that it was made, but the meaning is sculptural. That's what I meant by a meaning machine. It's, it's, it's always generating uh, new meaning in its relationship to the viewer. I think a sculptor's primary medium is space. And so um, the sculptures themselves are built out of space. They're, they're, they're part of uh, the space-time mosaic in a way. They're events in space, made of space. So I don't think you can remove a sculpture from space, though bad sculptors one can. I don't think sculptures are images. Right? I, I think they reverberate out of their ima images. So the spatial location is not installation. It's not unique to a particular space. Um, but neither is ancient work, even though it may have been made for a specific location in a square, a specific location in a church. You know, it's sculptural enough that it's still alive when it's it's moved. It kind of, I once saw a boy with frog, you know, it was put it in an exhibition in uh, Basel, and I thought it dragged the whole Dogana in with it somehow.
if a face, like in horse and rider, if the face is fully detailed, that's where your mind is going to go. You're going to say, oh, look, it looks just like his nose, that looks just like him, or that is, you know, um, or if the whole sculpture is perfectly detailed to the same level, there's no, you know, people say, oh, look at, the, you know, it, it actually looks incredibly weak because that, you know, then you have a, a, a mimicking of reality. You, you have a depiction of reality. You don't have a work of art. If every detail on a sculpture was brought to the same level of rendition, there would be no sculpture. I one day was looking at young man. We were looking after 10 years at a toenail on the toe and uh, changing it, bringing it in and out of focus. The toenail is relation, in relationship to the knee, to the penis, to the breast, to the eye, to the hair. These run in a very complex relationship with each other. The meaning of the sculpture is in the relationship of those details. No, because the materials themselves are nothing. They're like a pile of stone and lumber, you know, for a building or a heap of thoughts. The sculpture's not made out of clay or it's not made out of concrete, all right? The sculpture is made out of an image of a dwarf on a base, on a certain amount of detailing, of certain kind of gesture, of gravity of the sky, you know, to, to, to its weight, of weight, all of these, at no one aspect is more important than the other. So it's not a material making a rendition of uh, Doubting Thomas or of Christ. I'm an atheist, but one can make a sculpture of Christ without comment, even a, a, one could say an atheistic form of prayer. Um, be, you know, be, because it, it is an aspect of all these what it's made out of is all of these things, and I guess including culture, you know, including where we are to, you know, with the, with with the imagery. All that will, you know, clay will crack, concrete will erode, and uh, the sculpture will endure. As I grew older and began to age myself, I started realizing you could embed or had to embed in space-time and in time as well as space. So it wasn't just a matter of being here in this room. Um, the idea of the public space and the square is an extension of that horse and rider. It's not like just putting it and working in the spatial realm. It's the social is spatial and it is temporal in itself. If you put your monument like Joan of Arc up on a, the, the, the horse Joan of Arc and down the street, if you put it up on a pedestal or like, you know, Louis up on a pedestal, you're not only embedding in the region and space and time, you're also embedding in the sky in a way. Horse and rider that's going in front of the boars, it's pedestal is our social space. It's in the same space as you. I've spent my life trying to make sculptures that can sit, not physically without abuse, but psychologically in relationship to us. I don't decide. Some works, not all, but some can take as long as 10 years and take an immense amount of energy and effort by a large group of people. When I worked on Hinoki, the log, which is over at the uh, Pompidou, it was, the pattern for it was built over many years in my studio through many different people. Assistants would come and go. Then that pattern was sent to Japan and I, often tell the story when there were 10, I uh, sent it to a ma uh, master woodcarver's studio, uh, Yubaku, in uh, Osaka, and um, 
there was a uh, worker amongst this group of apprentices who I assumed was a young lady. And then over a period of time, a few years later, this young lady grew a beard. And uh, then I realized it wasn't a young lady, it was a young man. I tell the story because it, it, it was a temporality of the making that actually people changed. The making of the sculpture became a way of life and I just found it impossible. And I enjoyed that way of life so much that I found it impossible to bring it to an end. And uh, one day I asked Yubaku, you know, how long, while we were still working on it, I said, how long will this sculpture last? You know, with the wood, because I hadn't worked in wood before. And he said, um, oh, a really long time. He says, really long time. He said, in 400 years, it will be black from oxidation. In another 100 years, it will start to crack. And after 200 years, it will settle down. And then it will exist for another 200 years until it just dissolves into space and time and is, is no more. And that was the moment for me that, in a certain sense, completed it. And I just, I realized, I said, well, the sculpture is finally separated from me when I realized it had its own life cycle ahead of it. Authorship is one of the first things to slip away. Do you really care who made uh, you know, some of the work in the Louvre? Nor should you, you know, because they're gone. Yeah, I mean, it's important that it's not a retrospective because it's not organized as a retrospective. It does, it's not organized in um, an understanding of a development and, and, and of a trajectory of my artistic life. It becomes about the two institutions more than me. It has more to do also with Paris. It has a lot to do with Mr. Pinot, with Caroline, with Creaky. You know, it, it has to do also with um, what is feasible. Well, nothing, I mean, but you can't take America out of me. Our politics have gotten so poor and so bad that I often think I've got to get out of America before America gets out of me, in a sense, you know, and, and um, Los Angeles, is America. People say it's not like the rest of America, but it is America. Um, Chicago's America, New York's America, the South is America, the um, Republicans are American, the Democrats are American. So a question like that, it, 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 it's hard to say because you like saying, what does the fact that you're a male gender have to do with your work? You know, well, nothing but everything. My favorite sculpture in Paris, well, that again changes day to day. Um, it's not the Eiffel Tower, it's not Notre Dame, though I like those buildings very much. I, I love the Pompidou, but it's architectural. I like the Bourse, um, but it's a piece of architecture. There's many works I like in the Gamay. I like a lot Balzac that's just out on the street. Very hard question to ask. I, I think lately I had been thinking a lot about in the Louvre, in the big uh, stairway area, the uh, four horses that were in Versailles, and then, then they were moved to Paris. I like to look at, the, at them a lot and again, think about how their history is still with them. You don't have to know specifically what it was, but they're, they're dragging something of uh, the French and the French sensibility and politics, good and bad. And by politics, I say state of, I mean more state of being, both good and bad, you know, in every breath that they take.